becoming still before we actually start to move. So I'm becoming nice and still. Allow your breath to become full here. And allow yourself to sigh, let something go on the exhale. And before we begin anything at all, I want you to begin by asking yourself a question today. What do I feel? And try not to make the answer happen, just ask that self yourself that question. What do I feel? Let the answer kind of bubble up or arise in the way it will. It might be one thing, it might be a multitude of things. I'm always beginning by recognizing what we bring to our space, what we bring to our yoga mats is a great place to start. whatever it is we're feeling, physically, mentally, emotionally, the way to move through that in a healthy way is to actually go right through it, not to avoid it. So just asking yourself that, answering honestly, and listening without judgment to what comes up. And just being present with it. fuller breath in the next time you inhale. A little bit more force on the exhale. Do that two more times. A big full breath in. And open mouth exhale. Welcome Martin, good to see you. Big full breath in. Open mouth exhale. Find your way into a child's pose. Making your way into this first child's pose, allow your arms to stretch forward, your head to roll down to the mat. Maybe wiggle your hips a little bit. Finding some space in the back. And child's pose, a great way to begin. We have poses here great way to turn in and now asking yourself what's on my heart today one of the ways we can use our yoga practice is to move through what we're feeling physically mentally emotionally but also devoting our movements our breaths to what we're concerned about so breathing in here open mouth exhale walk your hands off your space to the right walking through the center, breathing out, hands off your mat to the left. And breathing in again through the center. Wiggle your spine up to a table position, fixing your knees underneath your hips, wrists under shoulders. Take a breath in for cow tilt, open the heart. Breath out for cat. And continue like that. Inhaling for cow. Exhaling for cat. And really moving the spine. Even moving the mental, even emotional space. Clearing it out on the exhales. Opening to newness. Possibility on the inhales. Two more rounds. And start to 
bring your spine to a neutral position, walk your hands forward about a handprint or so, curl your toes under, keeping the knees really bent, lift the hips, press the chest back toward the thighs, so you're in a, kind of a bent legged down dog, you step your feet a little bit wider, and then start to straighten one leg and the other, pedaling out here. your time to nod the head yes and shake it no and find some stillness here take a full breath in full breath out and looking forward rock to plank pose and Step your right foot between your hand, lower to your left knee. Lift your heart and then take your hands behind you, interlacing right thumb on top, pull the knuckles down, and just reach the heart up, pulling your left hip forward simultaneously. Drag your right heel back just a little bit. And reach your hands forward as you sit your hips back. Gently touch the floor with the fingertips. Cat Pagaman pose. You can turn the toes to the right to let the sensitivity of this movement be a little less intense. And we bend the right knee, crawl the hands back forward, step to down dog again, full breath in. Open mouth release. Rock to plank pose. And then step the left foot forward, lower to the right knee. Reach your heart up, reach your fingertips back behind you, interlace them, left thumb on top this time. Pull the knuckles down and back a little. Pull the right hip forward. Good. Left heel drags back just a little bit. Good. And then pull your left hip back, reach your hands forward. Touching the floor, flexing the left toes. Again, toes can turn to the left for a little less intensity. Forward bend your left knee, crawl your hands to the top of your space. This time, step your right foot up to meet your left. Ragdoll pose, hold on to opposite elbows. Bend your knees as much as you would like here and just sway a little bit. Let your head be really heavy. Good. Start to find some stillness. Release the fingertips to the floor. Keep your hips and your feet in line, so keep your hip socket distance apart. Inhale, lift halfway, pull the spine long. Exhale, fold forward, and then inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, hands right to the heart. Okay. Inhale, reach the hands tall. Exhale, lean over to the right, so right arm is down, left arm is reaching. up and exhale switch sides bring the left hand down reach up and over lift the right hand Good. inhale all the way up touch the palms together and exhale dive down here inhale lift halfway as you exhale hands down feet back plank position hold your plank position here for three breaths Really rooting down through the palms, pressing back through the heels. Good. Lowering down using knees or not. Come all the way to the belly. Inhale for Sphinx Pose. Slide your forearms forward, press the palms down. We'll take a lion's breath here. So lion's breath is where you open the mouth, stick the tongue out. If that feels silly to you, just remind yourself you're at home. You can do whatever you want. Okay? Or you can just take a regular sigh, whatever feels best for you to clear up. So big breath in. And then open mouth, the lion's breath. Two more times. Big breath in. A sigh or the lion's breath. One more time. Elbows lay out, hands draw back, cobra pose, press your 
toes down into the mat. Press your pelvis down. Good. See if you can hover your hands. Test your back straight here. Broaden through the collarbones. Yes. Good. Touch the floor. Bend the knees. Come up through table. Try to engage by using your belly muscles and pull back to downward facing dog. Five breaths in this down dog. Get really steady. Try to find stillness in your gaze. Somewhere between the feet or maybe between the legs with the gaze. Stillness in the body. And eventually stillness in the mind. Good. On your next inhale, look forward. Exhale and walk the feet to the top of your space. Inhale, half lift here, heart reaches forward, hips back. Exhale, head down. Inhale, rise all the way up, touch the palms together and right into another sun A. Dive all the way down. Inhale, half lift, exhale, hands down, feet back, plank position. Lower on the exhale, on your inhale, Cobra or up dog or even cow pose if you want to be really gentle this morning. Exhale, take it back to downward facing. And again, five breaths in your downward facing dog. See if you can find steadiness. See if you can feel like your hands and feet are rooting down into the earth beneath you here. Connecting you. Next breath in, rise to the tiptoes. Breath out, bend your knees, travel to the top. Good. Inhale, half lift here. Exhale, fold head down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, right into another sun A. Dive all the way down. Inhale, half lift, strong spine. Exhale, hands down, feet back. Plank position, lower on the exhale, lift the heart on the inhale. Good. Take it back, downward facing dog. Spreading through all ten fingers, all ten toes. Inhale, look forward, rock to plank. As you exhale, drop the knees down. Keep your toes curled under and make sure your hips are in line with your knees. Walk your hands really far forward. So you're coming into puppy dog pose. I want your puppy dog today to have your hands turned inward so your pinkies are kind of karate chopping the floor. The thumbs are up. Now holding this puppy dog position. A little contraction of the low belly will keep the low back safe. Good. Maybe check the width of your arms. They should be about shoulders width apart. Good. And find stillness. Another three breaths. Gazing forward, start to flatten your palms. Walk your hands back in. Set up for downward facing dog again. And take a breath in and float your right leg high. Breath out, step right foot forward here. Spiral the back heel down and sweep the arms right into warrior two. Good, hold your warrior two nice and steady here. Knee in line with the second and third toe. Gaze out over the fingertips, steady gaze. Good, exhale, windmill the arms down. Step back to plank pose. You can take vinyasa or go right to downward dog. Always the option to take as much or as little movement as you need. Notice how or if it's serving you to move, how or if it's serving you to be still. On the inhale, float the left leg high. 
On the exhale, step the left foot forward, sweep your arms open, warrior two. Again, take a moment to settle in, align, knee over second and third toe. Energy through both legs, not just the front leg. Steady gaze, smooth breath, calm mind. Then windmill your arms down, step back. Plank position, you can take vinyasa or just go right back to down dog. We'll all meet there. And take a full breath in, in this downward facing. Full breath out. And at the bottom of the exhale, walk your hands back towards your feet. Slide one palm under a foot and then the other, setting up for Pada Hastasana, Gorilla Pose. Knees can be bent or straight. Wiggle your toes, massage your wrists. Bring the toes right into the wrist crease there. Let the head be heavy. Good. Release one hand and then the other. Inhale, half lift. As you exhale, walk your hands forward here, all the way to plank pose. And then lower down to the right forearm, lower down to the left forearm. Hold your plank nice and steady. Breath in, breath out. And you can stay here or walk your feet into dolphin pose. So feet walking in, head will kind of drop down without touching the floor if you're in dolphin. The gaze just goes back towards the feet. Stick with this, either forearm plank or dolphin for two more breaths. Good. And then in as graceful a way as you can, make your way to down dog wherever you're at. Good. Lots of different options there. Good. Take a breath in. Open mouth release. Just let that Little pose go there. A good place. Next breath in, look up. Breath out, walk or hop your feet to the top of your space. Inhale, half lift here. As you exhale, touch the floor, bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose, reach the arms. Good. Hold for three. And two. And one. Keep the knees bent, just touch the floor lightly. Step your left foot back. Warrior one, wiggle your right foot to the right a little bit and then rise all the way up. Good. You might want to take your right thumb to your right hip crease, pull it back just a little, and then re reach your right arm up. Good. Adding on eagle arms here, sweep your right arm across and left arm over. So you're making this X and then make eagle arms. You can hold on to opposite shoulders or crisscross at the wrists. Good. Lift the fingertips a little higher. Maybe lift the sternum a little. Good. On the exhale, release the arms. Breathe in, reach up. And then breathe out. Touch the floor. Spiral to the back, ball of the back foot and reach the right arm up. Gentle twist. You can always bring the back knee down here if you need to. Hold for three. Yes. Open that right shoulder. Two. And one, exhale, right hand down, inhale, step the left foot forward, take a breath in, reach the spine long, breath out, bend the knees, touch the floor, Utkatasana, reach the arms up, hold for three breaths. Good. Use your back muscles here, pull the full belly in. Yeah. Good. On the exhale, touch the floor, knees are still bent, step the left foot way back, Warrior one set up, so you can wiggle that left foot to the left a little. And this time, bring your left thumb to your left hip crease as you rise up. Give yourself that adjustment as you rise up. Left hip back, right arm up, and then reach. Good, low belly pulls in. And then sweep the left arm across, right arm on top. Crisscross at the wrist if you can for eagle arms, or just touch your shoulders. Reach the fingertips up. Soften the jaw muscles. Good. Sweep the arms down. Breath in. Reach up. 
breath out, touch the floor, come to the ball of the back foot, gentle twist, left arm reaches, broaden through the collarbones here. Gaze can be directly forward or up towards the left hand. Good, two more breaths. Very nice, touch the floor, look forward, take a breath in, step your right foot up to meet the left, hold head down. Breathe in, lift halfway, breathe out, exhale, hands down, and step back. You can move through vinyasa or just push back to down dog. We'll all meet there. Looking good, you guys. Take a breath in, once you're in down dog, raise your right heel. Exhale, step it through, find warrior two. So sweep the arms open. Again, heel to arch alignment. Just one breath in your warrior two this time. Straighten your front leg, reach your arms up alongside your ears. Good, and then hinge at your hip. Come into triangle pose. Reach for your shin or maybe a block. Outside edge of the foot if you're touching the floor of a block. And then maybe reach the top arm up. The top arm never has to go up. You can just keep spiraling the chest open. So same as the other twist. Gazing forward or up at the top hand. Good, wonderful. Look down, touch the floor, step your right foot back, plank position, vinyasa, or just right to down dog. Meeting up in downward facing. Good, on a breath in, left leg floats up. Breath out, rack the shoulders forward as you step the left foot forward. That will help the transition. Come up through warrior two, just a breath here. And then sweep the arms up alongside here, straighten the front leg, hinge at the hips, trikonasana, triangle pose, hand to shin, foot, floor, or block. Again, focus on spiraling your right shoulder open. Press your throat and your head back a little bit here. Yes, steady gaze. Soften that bottom shoulder down. Good, good. Very nice. Look down, touch the floor. Step back, plank pose. You can take vinyasa or just back to downward facing. Very nice. Take a breath in. Open mouth, exhale, let something go. Next breath in. Rise up to your tiptoes, look forward. Breath out, walk or hop your feet to the top. Wiggle the feet together if they're not already. Inhale, lift halfway. As you exhale, touch the floor, bend the knees. Utkatasana, chair pose. Sweep the arms up. And then exhale, hands to heart. Twisted chair, turn your left elbow tip forward. You can stay here or hook your elbow over your knee. Squeeze the thighs together, sit the hips lower. If you need more space in the upper back, make a fist with your left hand and push down on it with your right hand. Yeah, press the throat back, press the forehead back. Beautiful, release, touch the floor, head down. Inhale, chair pose, sink the hips, reach the arms up, touch the palms together. Good, take the hands right to the heart, twist to the left this time. So right elbow tip is forward, you can stay here or hook the elbow over, sink the hips lower. Maybe make a fist with the bottom hand, wrap it with the top hand, good. Twisted chair is quite a challenge, breathe. Good, release, touch the floor, head down. On your inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fingertips down, step your left foot back, set up for warrior one once more. Just one breath, warrior one. Good, reach forward, touch the left hand to the floor, come to the ball of the back foot, gentle twist. Look down, touch the floor, step the back foot in about a third of the way, setting up for pyramid pose. If you have a block, put your left hand on a block to help lift that left shoulder. 
you don't have a block, just come up onto your fingertips. Okay, pull your right hip back with your right thumb, and then reach your left hand forward here. Push down strongly through your right foot. Pyramid pulls this in strength in the back. Good. And then touch the floor again, left hand down, right hand down, and make your way back to downward facing, however you want to get there. Step back, you can take vinyasa. Again, tons of actions for movement or stillness. And it doesn't need to be the same all the time. Go moment to moment. Stay present with what is in this sequence, in this moment. Good. On a breath in, rise to the tiptoes. Breath out, bend the knees. Travel to the top of your mat. Inhale, half lift. As you exhale, full, bring the head down. Bend your knees just a little bit. Step back with the right foot. Warrior one, wiggle the left foot to the left. Just one breath in. Good. Reaching for a gentle twist. Right hand touches down. Left thumb reaches up. You're on the ball of the back foot now. Yeah. Good. Look down. Touch the floor. Step your back foot in about a third of the way. Right toes aim towards the upper right hand corner of the mat. If you have a block, put it right underneath your right shoulder. Start to lift. If you don't have that block, just fingertips to the floor. Take your left thumb to your left hip crease. Pull it back as you press your left big toe down. Pyramid pose. Try to work the back strength here and reach your right arm forward just for a moment. Pyramid's great for our legs, our hips. It works the back as well. Good. Touch the floor of the block again. Realign here. On an exhale, step back. Make your way through vinyasa or just go right back to downward facing. And once you get to downward facing, decide how you want to take a moment for yourself. It could be child's pose for five breaths. It could be downward facing for five breaths. It could be dolphin for five breaths. What do you need in this moment? Reconnect and let your body answer for you. Really listen to it. not already into a child's pose, go ahead and let yourself get there just for a moment. And then roll your spine up, sit on your heels, so you're in a nice kneeling position here. Good. Take a breath and stand on your shins, reach up. Exhale, slide the hands forward here, so you're in table position. And then let your right knee spiral to the side a little bit. Extend your left leg straight. We're gonna come into a version of Bashi Stasana, side plank. So this is option one, right knee down, left arm, left leg extended. If you wanna stack this up in any way, bringing your right leg back, you can stagger your left foot or stack your left foot, lift, your top hip, no matter what option you're taking. Good. Very, very nice here. As gracefully as you can, come back to a table pose. Give yourself a moment. Maybe even take a child's pose for just a breath. Yeah. And then we'll set up for the second side. I want you to repeat what you did on the other side, as long as it's okay in your body today. So left shin will kind of swing out to the side a little bit, right arm goes up and over. Again, as gentle or as strong as you want to make it, or you can just be exploratory, kind of curious here. See where your edge is today, go there. Find steadiness in the raise and then breathe. These look really, really nice. Again, as gracefully as you can on an exhale, you're going to come back to a table position and then maybe a child's pose for a breath or two. Pause and listen. What is present for you in this moment here? What is speaking? 
connected to you in this moment here? How can you connect deeper to what is important to you? Good. Find your way back into downward facing. On a breath in, swing your right leg high. Breath out, step forward, warrior two, sweeping the arms open. Good, just one breath here. Right into triangle pose, straighten the front leg, hinge at the hip. Very nice. So look down at your right foot. You can bend your right knee as you transition here to half moon. So walk your right fingertips forward. If you have a black, put it about a foot or so in front of you. And then you can stack your left hip on top of your right. Bring your left hip and your left hand together if you like. Or open the arm up. My plant is getting so big here. Oh my god, I don't need my plant. Good, these look very nice. Go ahead and step back slowly. Find yourself in a warrior two. Straighten your front leg, reverse triangle, reach way back. Come back up here, and then turn your right toes towards the long edge of the mat. Wiggle your heels a little further apart, turn the toes in a little bit, hands to hips. Breath in, breath out, come down halfway. Find length through the spine. Good, touch the floor one hand at a time, and yogi's choice. Hands forward or hands back. If you have a tripod headstand practice and you want to work that, you are welcome to do so. You're just going to be there a breath or so. <laughs> Root down through the feet if they're touching the floor. Relax through the shoulders and the neck. Good. If you're spinning tripod headstand, slowly come down with control. And then we'll all start to walk our hands back underneath our shoulders. Lift up halfway, breathe in. Breathe out, bring your hands to your hips. Good, breathe in, rise all the way up. Turn your right toes towards the front of the mat. And then bring your hands to the floor. You can step back right to down dog or move through vinyasa. Whatever helps you move through your feeling here. Feeling it all. Yoga practice is really about moving the energy in the body, letting the blood circulate so we can release. Take a breath in, reach the left leg high, breath out, step forward, warrior two. Just one breath in warrior two. And then reach the arms up, hinge at the hips as the left leg is straight for triangle pose. And just one breath here. You can bring your right hand to your right hip. Look down at your left big toe. You can bend that left knee as you start to shift your left hand forward. So hand to floor or black. You might just float the right leg up just a little, or you might start to stack the right hip on top all the way. Again, right hand to right hip, or reach the right arm up for half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. It's a tough one. Steady your gaze. Good. Just do what you can. Slowly bend the front knee, step back, warrior two. You got it. Good. Straighten the front leg, reach back, reverse triangle, let it go. And then bring your left hand to your left hip, turn your left toes towards the long edge of the mat. This time, interlace hands behind your back, pull the knuckles down, lift the sternum, but pull the low ribs in. So you're not going to be puffing the chest so much that the low back sways. You're keeping integrity in the spine. Good. Keep that integrity as you slowly come forward. Super, super, super slow. Relax the muscles in the face. See what you can turn off that does not need to be working here.
Push down more into the feet. Start to lift your heart up. Come up very, very slowly. Good. You don't want a head rush here. Okay. Open your arms out to the side and then just windmill the hands down. You can take vinyasa or skip it. Go right to downward facing dog. Yogi's journey there. Take a breath in, raise your right leg. This time bend your knees, stack your hip. If you have flip dog in your practice and you can get into it safely, go ahead and do that. If you're not sure how to do that safely, watch first. You wrap your shoulders over your wrists, you turn your left toes towards the back of the mat, and then right foot steps over. Reach the heart and hips high. That right leg doesn't go over, no worries. You can just keep holding the right leg high. Try the transition out flip dog by looking down at your left hand and then step right foot forward to the outside edge of your right hand. Yeah, lizard lunge here. Alright, taking just a few breaths in lizard. I'm going to keep it a little bit higher today. Right from lizard Start to walk your right foot across the mat into a pigeon pose. So bring your right knee towards your right wrist. Your right foot can go back a little bit, but still flex your right toes. So wiggle your left foot back. Puff your chest here, and then maybe come forward and down. If you would like to add a shoulder stretch arm to your pigeon pose today, you can. So option, stay where you're at, or lift up a little bit out of your pigeon, just a little, so you're on your right forearm. Thread your left arm underneath your right, and then let your left ear touch the floor. Walk your right fingertips forward, or maybe even reach the right arm all the way behind the back. You might even be able to hold on to your right big toe, with your right peace fingers. And if you can't, no worries, your right big toe is still there, I promise you. And try to allow yourself to explore, allow yourself to just be curious about where you're at. Don't force it. Just let it be with a curiosity, like, oh, that's where the body's at. Arm is wrapped behind the back, slowly unravel it. And together, we'll start to lift up. Walking the hands a little closer in towards the right shin. Curl the left toes under, sweep your right leg up. Wiggle it out in any way you need to in this three-legged dog. And then one more option. You can take a three-legged vinyasa or no vinyasa. However you want to travel back to downward facing, your choice. Very nice. And we'll set up for the second side. So make sure your down dog is nice and steady. Left leg floats up, bend the knees, stack the hip. And you can always stay just right here. If you want to take flip dog and you know it safely, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, follow these steps. Shoulders wrap over wrists. Turn the right toes towards the back of the mat. You might just hover here, or you might step the left foot over the body. Good. All options welcome. That's a tough one. Good. Look down at the right hand. Flip back over if you're flipped. If the left leg's just hovering, you can stay. Take a breath in and then breath out. Lizard lunge. Left foot to the outside edge of the left hand. Stay here for a couple of breaths. Try to pull the sternum up. Pull the tailbone down, space through the front body. Openness through the hips. Good. Walk your left foot across your mat. So the left knee is in line with the left wrist. Flex the left foot for pigeon. Stretch the right toes back. Moments 
here. And then coming into your pigeon, walking your arms forward, letting the head and shoulders relax. Even if you went into the twist on the other side, take a couple moments with the spine in neutral first. You always want to go slowly with awareness. Right, if you took that twist, you're going to come up onto the forearms. Left forearm presses into the mat a little bit as you stretch your right arm underneath. If you want to take that twist, right ear towards the mat. Again, left hand can reach just forward, or you can wrap the left arm all the way behind the back. Maybe reach the piece fingers for the left big toe. is wrapped slowly unravel it let your left palm touch the floor and together we'll lift up walking your hands in a little closer to the body curl the right toes under push the floor away from you as you swing the left leg up and back wiggle out that left leg in any way you need to and then float it down to the earth here or take three legged vinyasa that was an option on the other side so i don't want to deprive you of that if you're really hungry for that <laughs> From the space, take a breath in. Open up, exhale. Look forward, walk or hop your feet to the top of your mat. Inhale to lift halfway. Exhale, fold, bring the head down. If you have a block, take it with you and rise all the way up. You can like reach the hands up or just leave them down at the side of your that block. If you have a block, put it high between the legs just for alignment. If you don't have a block, no worries. Just make sure your toes are pointed forward here. We're going to do standing camel and stress in a pose. So feet root down, one hand to your low back, pull the tailbone down, one hand to your sternum, lift your hand up by lifting your sternum, but keep pulling the tailbone down. Find length through your spine right here. All back bends are about length in the spine. It's actually not about bending the back. So find, even though it's called that, I know that's confusing. Find length in the spine, and then keep lifting the heart, pushing the hips forward any amount. A little bit goes a long way. Squeeze the elbows together. Chin can stay towards chest, or if it's comfortable enough on your neck, gaze up a little bit. Not back, but up. Reach up through your nose to the ceiling. Yeah. Good. Still rooting down strongly through the feet. Two more breaths. Head is the last thing to come up, so lift with your heart. Find neutral here. Good. Release your block. Touch the floor. Stand on your shins. So bring the heels or the toes rather behind you, curl the toes under, walk up so you're standing on your shins. Repeating, Ustrasana, camel pose, tailbone pulls down, heart lifts. Again, a little bit goes a long way. Think length more than bend. Push the hips forward, but lift the heart. Maybe lift the nose towards the ceiling. Squeeze the elbows together. If you can keep all that lift and you want to reach for the heels, go for it. There's no extra points or reward back there. But if that's where your edge is at today, go for it. Nice. If head is back, it's the last thing that comes up, no matter where you're at. Lift with your heart. Come back to neutral and just sit back on your heels. Bring a hand to your heart, hand to your belly. As you sit here for a moment, ask yourself, what am I grateful for? Opening up this heart space. Inviting all goodness in. Recognize the goodness around you already. And more comes in. Go ahead and blink, open your eyes. Swivel your legs around here. And we'll set up for bridge pose. So feet hip socket distance apart. Come to 
into a lying down position. Now for some of you, you might want to go right into wheel. You could be open enough for that. Or you can reach your fingertips through your heels and just lift the hips up. Palms can press into the mat or interlace the hands. Walk up onto the shoulder blades and press down into the feet. The strength of back bends comes from the strength of the foundation. Don't be hungry for the pose. Instead, let your appetite be for the benefits that come with the pose. And it doesn't mean you need to get in the deepest expression of it to receive that. Slowly release wherever you're at. Let your knees sway or knock in towards one another for about three or four breaths. We'll take one more back bend. Set up a firm foundation first. Find your security, your stability. Good, fingertips towards the heels, that looks nice. Good, and then lift up bridge or wheel, your choice. If you're going into wheel, yeah, hug the elbows in towards one another. And come to the crown of the head first or push right up depending on the openness in your body today. Whatever's touching the floor, you really want to push down into the floor. So if your head's on the floor and bridge, just a gentle pressure to the back of the head and bridge here. Good. Two more breaths wherever you're at. You can do it. Come down slowly with control. Wiggle your feet a little bit forward this time as you let your legs release. Good. You can sway the knees side to side. And then one more back bend. I know it's a lot. Bridge or wheel. Or if you prefer a different back bend, you could flip to your belly, do bow pose. Or if you really love camel, you could do camel pose again. Changing the gravitational point changes the experience for us sometimes. So it's the same shape, but just a different expression. Wherever you're at, thighs roll towards one another. Good, these look awesome about four different versions. This is great. Wherever you're at, two more breaths. And come down slowly with control. If you were in bow pose with your face pointed down, yeah, just let your head rest on your hands. If you're on your back, you can start to extend the arms and legs long. Just stretch out, let the spine come to neutral wherever you are. couple breaths with a nice neutral spine, arms and legs extended. Good. And then find your way back onto your back, if you're not there already, and roll up to a seat. You can roll to the side or you can roll toward the back. sternum towards your extended shin and walk your hands down here. If it's easy for you to touch your foot, then wrap your left hand around the foot and hold on to the left wrist with the right hand. If that's not happening, no worries. I'd rather have you holding on to the shin. Again, there's no extra reward for going deeper into the pose. The reward, if you will, is in the payoff of the benefits you receive, which is always at a different point for us, depending on our circumstance. The practice adjusts towards our needs, not the other way around. Good, slowly release. You're gonna come up, reach your right hand back, and then press into your right hand in your right shin and just swivel up into this lovely side stretch. A little bit of a back bend too. Mm -hmm. You got it. Reach back, back, back. Very nice. And then sit back down. Really good. And switch sides. So right foot extends, left foot comes in. Again, if you need to adjust, bring the foot a little bit more forward. 
forward so that knee relaxes down. Good. Lift your sternum, turn it towards your front straight leg. Walk the hands down in your mountain here. Just keep reaching forward with the heart. Good. If you're pretty far forward, some of you are, reach that right hand around. Back of the hand faces the bottom of the foot. And then hold on to the wrist. Can you feel what's opening as you breathe in? Can you soften into that opening as you breathe out? And if it's not opening, maybe ease up, bow to the pose a little bit, and then you'll feel the opening as you breathe in and out. And slowly come up, lifting yourself back to your seat. Reach your left hand way back. And then push into your left hand, your left shin. Reach up and over. So you're pressing into the right foot. You're extending with the right fingertips. Yep. Good. Come back down to a seated position. Good. Extend your legs in front of you here. And then bring the soles of the feet together. Tarasana. So Heels are away from the pelvis, you get to round down. If you have a block or something, go ahead and let yourself drape your forehead to a block or maybe stack your fists. Some of you can bring your forehead right to your heels. Again, this pose is about softening and really surrendering. Let the back body soften. Everything get a little bit heavy here. a cross-legged position if that's a little bit uncomfortable for you maybe sit up on something so you feel a little lift in the hips so the knees can drop lower than the hips so I'm gonna be here for about a minute just adding on this moment of stillness and quiet here notice where your hands want to fall you can have the palms up if you feel like you want to receive palms down if you feel like you need more grounding or as we've done the last couple of weeks, you can come to Yana Mudra too, thumb and first finger together, connecting to your inner wisdom. Just notice where your hands want to rest naturally, let them go there. And then just take this next minute just to breathe and listen and feel. What do I need to know? Again, not trying to answer that question, but just let your heart, your mind, images, sensations, anything just bubble up in you. Pay attention to what arises. Enjoy about three more breaths here. And if 
you're really loving this seated meditation, you can stick with it through the remainder of the practice, or you can finish up with us now with a couple of finishing poses in Shavasana. Yogis choice always. If you want to finish up with the poses, go ahead and flutter open your eyes, let yourself come down onto your back, squeezing your knees into your chest. Let the knees drop over to the left, creating that supine twist. And bring them through the center and to the right. back to the center. If there's any other finishing pose you want to take, feel free to take it. Otherwise, just set yourself up for your rest pose, your Shavasana. Allow yourself to get as comfortable as you can. same breath here. Let's go ahead and release out all the air. Take a full belly breath in. Let the chest rise. Let the air travel all the way up to the top of the head. And slowly sigh it out. Again, big belly breath in. Fill the chest, the throat, all the way to the crown of the head. Slowly sigh it out. One more time, filling the belly, the chest, the throat, all the way to the crown of the head. And open up, exhale. Resting again in this softness, this stillness. This is where we can find clarity and we can connect to our deep inner wisdom. Allow yourself the next couple of moments here just to receive and to soak in all of the positivity you created, mind, body, maybe even spirit on your mat today. As you remain still here resting, the quote I have for you today is from Cleo Wade. It says, don't be the reason someone feels insecure. Be the reason someone feels seen, heard, and supported by the entire universe. The potential of our love to create a macro impact on the world is based on the amount of love we are able to put into our micro connections. Because all of our actions hold energy, everything we do has the power to affect another person. How do you treat others? How do you talk to people? Whether it's your best friend or a stranger, be someone who sees them, who affirms their dignity, and who honors their humanity. Be the person who gives someone the relief of knowing that the world ain't so bad after all. a 
lower back in here. And open up, exhale. Start to reawaken with movements in the hands and feet and let your head rock from side to side. Stretch out through the arms and legs and just take another big morning breath. Greeting the day, feeling hopefully renewed and energized. Tuck the knees into the chest, giving yourself a well-deserved hug and roll to one side. Pause for that moment of stillness and of gratitude. And use the strength of your arms to press up to a comfortable seat. Gathering your hands in front of the heart space here, resting the thumbs on the sternum so you can feel the in and out breath. Connecting from your ribs to your hands. Bow your head down toward your heart. Always remembering the mind-body connection here, the heart and head connection. Together we'll seal in our practice with the breath. So go ahead and release out all the air. And take a very deep nourishing breath in and let it go. And I thank each one of you for being here with me this Saturday morning. I appreciate you so much. Namaste, everyone. Mm, thank you for being here, Martin in London. Wow. <laughs>